really? Do I really need to make a video today of why you should not be liquidating your portfolio? Or are you boys and girls big enough to know that? This was not the video plan for today. There was supposed to be a video about PayPal, but the market has been crashing all over the world and I believe it is important to talk about it. I was in the bus, I took a nap in the bus and then dreaming about maybe it's time to make such a video, it's not scripted at all. But let's talk about it. So what's happening in the market? I did not get the time today to read the Wall Street Journal, the Financial Times. So on Twitter, if you go on Twitter, on X, you will see that everything is crashing. Everyone is just pessimistic about the future. And I have read a few things, so I know why they are pessimistic that the world is ending in two days. The main reason, as I understand what's happening in the market, is that it started in Japan. Interest rates in Japan has been at 0% for years, and everyone was borrowing money in Japanese yen and then converting it into US dollars to buy US stocks, to buy other stocks all around the world. But the fact that the Bank of Japan raised interest rates, now it means that those people who borrowed in Japanese yen, they have to pay at the high interest rates. But these people were so leveraged that even a 0.25 percentage point increase in interest rates, this makes them need to liquidate their portfolios. I don't even know how these people work, how do they exist, what's happening in their head that they take so much leverage. I don't know, but I'm sure you're not one of those people. So we should not really be scared about that. There are other things happening that maybe should scare us, for example, probably World War Three, Iran, Israel. We know, we know Iran said that they were going to retaliate after the killing of the Hamas leader in, in Iran. But this war has been going on for decades now. And at some point, it has been even worse than that. And I'm not worried. I have Israeli stocks in my portfolio. I'm not worried about the future. If we have World War III, I'm sure there are things that we should be more worried about compared to our portfolio, such as not dying, which is more important. Nevertheless, even if we have World War III, some stocks are going to do well. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. The next reason why everyone is bearish today is because probably there's going to be a recession in the US. Okay, maybe sooner or later, there are going to be recessions, but some companies do better than others. It's about choosing the right companies for your portfolio. If you invest in a company with low margins and you know that this company probably is going to lose money in a recession, probably then you should be scared. But now if you invest in a really good company, high margins, high return on invested capital, yes, earnings will be lower during the recession, but it will survive. It's a long-term game, but it never works trying to predict the market. To say that tomorrow we are going to have a recession, next year we are going to have a recession, nobody knows. People have been predicting recessions for years, but Sometimes it happens when you don't expect it. So I will not try to predict a recession, to predict a market crash or anything like that. Another reason why people are worried is that apparently Warren Buffett is timing the market and now he sees a recession, that's why he sold Apple. I already explained in another video why I believe he sold Apple. The simple reason is everything has to do with opportunity cost. Apple is in such a situation today that they are a great company, but capital allocation is poor. They have no other choice. Apple has a lot of cash and cash is paying 4-5% yield and they are buying back their shares at 3% yield. So they are losing money when buying back shares. They could pay dividends which would be better but then if Apple pays the dividends they will need to keep paying over the long term and I believe they don't want to do that. When Warren Buffett sees that, that Apple has a poor capital allocation with such a low 3% yield, Apple is generating around $100 billion a year in owner's earnings, $3 trillion market cap, so around 3.3% earnings yield. It's not a company that is going to grow at double digits a year. It is a slow growing company. When Warren Buffett sees that, I believe he sees that holding cash right now is a better investment. If you're going to read the 2003 perfect letter to shareholders. We'll see that he mentioned that he committed a big mistake during the peak of the great bubble, that is the dot com bubble, that he did not sold his shares of Coca-Cola, Gillette, everything else. He 
believes in those companies, but he also sees them as securities that at the top, when they are expensive, you have to sell. And those were big positions in his portfolio. And Apple today is an even bigger position. It's not just Apple, it's also Bank of America. So he's selling his two largest positions. Should you sell just like him? You are not in the same situation as him. He is limited to what he can do in terms of investment. But you can look for companies that are yielding more than the 5% on US treasuries. It's all about opportunity cost. If you can get something more than 5%, Maybe it is a good investment instead of you holding cash. And if that company is not going to lose that much earnings during a recession, and you know for sure maybe 10 years from now, 15 years from now, that the earnings are going to grow at a certain rate, it could be a great investment. That's why if you look at my portfolio today on the top, you will have FDJ, La Française des Jeux. Over the trailing 12 months, the owner's earnings generated by FDJ was over 600 million euros. How much do you want to pay for these 600 million euros? That's the question you have to ask. If you use a discount rate of 10%, that's P ratio of 10, so 600 times 10, that gives you 6 billion euros. And you look at the market, it's selling at around this price, 10 times earnings. Of course, what matters when you're making an investment is not earnings in the last 12 months, but future earnings. Now, if you think about FDJ in 10 years, are they going to generate more cash compared to what they are generating today? Of course, FDJ owns a monopoly. They have a mode. In France, in Ireland, they control the lottery. It's long term. They have a long term contract, 25 years in France, in Ireland, 15 years. So for now, we should not be worried. So 10 years from now, FDJ is going to be making more money compared to what they are making, just the lottery business. Because they have a mode, nobody is going to come and compete with them. And you look over the long term, people have always been playing lottery. Even during recessions, of course, the stakes go down a little, but then it recovers. We are not even counting the online betting that is now growing all over Europe, all over the world. I know what you will be saying, maybe there are regulations. The company is already partly owned by the French government, 20% ownership. The French government have seat on the board of directors. I'm not worried about this company being regulated. The regulation actually is going to help them because you look at the competitors in Europe, most of them have a lot of debt and I'm sure that one or two of them are going bankrupt in the coming years. But FDJ has the best balance sheet, except maybe for Kinred, which is a company that are acquiring very soon. So Kinred is a Swedish company. You look at Kinred, they were not regulated, locally regulated. So they exited many markets, even the US, they exited the US market. They exited the Dutch market, which was their largest market. But then they re-entered the market once they got the local license. Now merging with FDJ, this is going to create a new online betting powerhouse in Europe. Coming back to Kinred, the company had 174 million pounds in owner's earnings last year, over the trailing 12 months. How much are you going to pay for that? 10 times earnings, and this is a company growing. I believe we can pay more than 10 times earnings. When calculating the intrinsic value of Kinred, I got a price more than 2.8 billion euros. That's the price that FDJ is acquiring Kinred. In other words, FDJ is buying a company below its intrinsic value. They are getting more in value compared to what they are paying. And if you look at the stock price of Kinred, you will understand why the stock price has been declining when they exited the Dutch market. Now think about FDJ with Kinred, generating 600 with maybe 200 million, 800 million euros a year in owner's earnings. And of course, this is going to grow. How much are you willing to pay for that? If you pay 15 times earnings, you have a 12 billion euro valuation. And FDJ is trading at only 6.4 billion euros. You see, this is how you have to think. It's not just about FDJ, it's about any investment you're making. If you have such a company to do in your portfolio, you will not be worried. I'm not telling you to just go blindly invest in FDJ. I have made a lot of research. You can see some of the research, however, in French. There are some advantages to be able to speak French and other languages, but it's all about finding great companies. Maybe this is a company not for you. Maybe you don't like investing in betting, then maybe you should avoid the New York Stock Exchange, the world's biggest casino. But nevertheless, invest in such businesses, great businesses, which you know have a long-term potential and you can buy at a discount. Then you should not be worried about what the market is telling you or not telling you. If I had to choose and tell you that a business which is probably better than Kinred, than 
if the trade would be upper but unfortunately capital allocation is poor right now and this is what is ruining everything i believe so and uh, this is why i believe warren buffett sold his shares of apple i would recommend you watch this video next have a nice day and goodbye